We'll go for some questions on sentence improvement, right? Rules are there and rules have to be by heart. Come to the first one. I prefer to ride than to walk. Prefer is a verb. Prefer is a verb. And the rule is this. The verb prefer will be followed by the preposition to. It's always prefer to. Right? Now all the options. No. Three options say to. So one option can be eliminated. Option C is eliminated. Because prefer C says riding than walking. Now these ER words are more words. ER words means like stronger, taller, sharper. More words in a sense, more beautiful, more intelligent, right? ER words and more words are termed as comparative degree adjectives. These ER words and more words, comparative degree adjectives will be followed by than. Younger to is a wrong usage. It's younger than, stronger than, taller than, higher than, lower than. Prefer is not a comparative degree adjective. Now, if it is a comparative degree adjective, we can separate ER from that word. Like stronger is strong plus ER, taller is tall plus ER, higher is high plus ER. There's nothing like pref plus ER. So, prefer is not a comparative degree adjective. Comparative degree adjectives will be followed by than. Prefer is a verb, and the verb prefer will be followed by to. So, option C is eliminated. The words that appear after prefer will be nouns, right? The words that appear after prefer will be nouns. If I say, I prefer tea to coffee. Tea is a noun, coffee is also a noun. I prefer a car to a bike. A car is a noun, bike is also a noun, right? I prefer a pen to a pencil. A pen is a noun, pencil is also a noun. So words that appear after prefer will be nouns. Based on that, options B and D are eliminated. Ride is a verb, V1. Walk is also a verb, V1. So B and D are gone. Now we have just one option left. That is option A, riding to walking. Now, riding is a noun here. Walking is also a noun here. There is a term called gerund. G-E-R-U-N-D. Gerund means verb plus ing acting as a noun. Verb plus ing acting as a noun is called a gerund. Right? Now, if it's better you go for some examples from your everyday life. If I say, if I go for a statement like, smoking is injurious to health. Smoking is injurious to health. I say that smoking is a noun here. Now, to find out the noun as is very easy. We need to ask only one question, that is what. If you are getting the answer to the question what, that becomes a noun in the sentence. The sentence is smoking is injurious to health. What is injurious to health? The answer is smoking. So we ask what is injurious to health, the answer is smoking. So we are getting the answer to the question what is smoking, so smoking becomes a noun here. Smoking is an ing word. Smoking is smoke plus ing. Smoke is a verb. So verb plus ing acting as a noun, smoking becomes a gerund. So any ing word acting as a noun can be called a gerund. As I said, the words that appear after prefer will be nouns. Come to option A. I prefer riding to walking. I prefer riding to walking. What I prefer, we are getting the answer to the question what as this blank, right? I prefer dash. What I prefer, the answer to the question what is this blank? So this blank must be filled with a noun. Riding is a noun. Walking must also be a noun. If riding is a noun, walking must also be a noun. Tea is a noun. Coffee is also a noun. Pen is a noun. Pencil is also a noun. So uh, what I prefer, the answer is riding. We're getting the answer to the question what is this blank? Noun. Riding is an ing word. Any ing word acting as a noun is called a gerund. So riding is a gerund here. Walking is also a gerund here. The answer must be option A. Because of a simple rule, right? After prefer, we need to have nouns. Because of a simple rule, B, C and D are eliminated. The answer must be option A. Come on, next one. 
the teacher is very angry at his student now this is a commonly made uh, you know we we make uh, an, an error in this while speaking usually while speaking i am angry dash you i am irritated dash you i am happy dash you no, i'm happy for you is correct and happy with you is also correct these two are phrases i'm happy for you means right now you're in a very good state in a successful state and i'm happy because of that that means i'm a well wisher as i'm happy for you i'm happy with you means the way you treat me right the way you treat me i'm happy because of that as i'm happy with you i am irritated at you is wrong right i am irritated with you i am irritated i am disappointed with you i am happy with you i am in love with you i am frustrated with you all these are correct uses now anger irritation disappointment frustration happiness love all these are emotions or feelings we share our emotions or feelings with a person at something right i repeat we share emotions or feelings with a person at something you are a person so i'm angry with you irritated with you disappointed with you i'm frustrated with you i am in love with you i'm happy with you etc your behavior is something i'm angry at your behavior i'm shocked shocked is also kind of feeling feeling right shocked and surprised uh, shocked and surprised both are sudden feelings right we get shocked for a negative activity we get surprised for a positive activity that's the only difference the only difference is in the charges right is regarding the charge getting surprised is positive getting shocked is negative i am surprised at your performance surprise also kind of feeling your performance is something so i'm surprised at your performance etc so we share emotions or feelings with the person at something now come to the statement the teacher was very angry the teacher's feeling at his student his student is a person i said we share emotions or feelings with the person at something so at his student is wrong it must be with his student the answer must be option a so easily b c and d are eliminated answer must be a the teacher was very angry with his student get it the teacher was very angry at his student's behavior is correct because the behavior is something right? rude behavior and all come next one it is high time you go home this rule comes in the exceptions on tenses now the usage is it is time and it is high time it is time and it is high time will be followed by simple past tense this is the rule some usages have some rules of their own you need to buy hard this it is time and it is high time we'll take you through those in detail it is time it is high time will be followed by simple past tense and simple past is subject plus be to if i go for a statement like it is time he worked hard it is high time he worked hard come to first one it is time he worked hard it is time will be followed by simple past tense he worked hard the subject here is he plus verb this b2 there's nothing like subject plus v3 subject plus v2 subject plus v2 is simple past tense it is time followed by simple past tense grammatically correct it is time the sentence started in the present tense he worked hard ended in the past tense started in the present ended in the past no tense consistency still grammatically correct exception with the usage it is time similarly the next one it is high time he worked hard it is high time will also be followed by simple past tense he worked hard the subject here is he plus verb does be to subject plus be to is simple past tense it is high time followed by simple past tense grammatically correct now both the statements are grammatically correct only a slight difference in the meaning come the first one it is time he worked hard means he must he should have worked hard earlier it is a high time he worked hard means he should have worked hard much earlier if i say your fee is due your fee is due means paid or yet to be paid yet to be paid pending 
Your fee is overdue means pending for a long time, right? It is time he worked hard means he should have worked hard earlier. It is high time he worked hard means he should have worked hard much earlier. So both are grammatically correct, only a slight difference in the meaning, right? Now it is time, it is high time, it will be followed by simple past tense. Now come to option, question number three, in the case of sentence improvement. It is time you go there. You go, the subject here is you, plus go is v1, subject plus v1 is simple present. It is time cannot be followed by simple present, option D is eliminated. Come to A, have gone. Have gone is half plus v3. Gone is v3 and half plus v3 is present perfect. It is time cannot be followed by present perfect tense, option A is also eliminated. Should go, should go is should plus v1 plural. That structure is correct, but it is time cannot be followed by this eliminated. Come to option C. It is high time you went home. You went home. The subject here is you plus went is v2. Go, went, gone. Subject plus v2 is simple past tense. It is high time followed by simple past tense. The answer must be option C. Based on a single rule, we can eliminate three options. A, B and D can be eliminated. Come on, next one. By this time tomorrow, I will reach my home. As I said, first try to understand the meaning, only then think about the rule, right? By this time tomorrow, I will reach my home. Tomorrow refers to future. So sentence must be in the future tense, undoubtedly, right? By this time tomorrow, I will reach my home. There is only one idea in this sentence. That is, I will reach my home. By this time, just denote, by this time tomorrow, just denotes time. The only idea here is, I will reach my home. Now the rule, this rule comes in the topic tenses. And it is about the usage of future perfect. If I go for a statement like, He will have visited that place by next Monday. He will have visited that place by next Monday. Next Monday refers to future. And we have only one idea in this sentence. Next Monday is noting time, right? Now we have only one idea in this sentence. That idea is in the future tense. When there is only one ID in the future tense, along with by, right? When there is only one ID in the future tense, along with by, that idea must be in the future perfect tense. This is regarding the usage of future perfect. When there is only one ID in the future, I repeat, when there is only one ID in the future, along with by, that sentence must be in the future perfect tense. That ID must be in the future perfect tense. So next Monday refers to future. So it is anyway future. By is there only one idea, it must be in the future perfect tense. He will have visited, the subject here is he plus will plus have plus visited is v3. Nothing like have plus v1 or have plus v2, it's have plus v3. Subject plus will plus have plus v3 is future perfect tense. One idea in the future along with by, it is in the future perfect tense, grammatically correct. Now come to this one. Now this is about the usage of future perfect. Come to question number four. By this time tomorrow, I will reach my home. Tomorrow refers to future. There's only one idea in this sentence, along with by. So it must be in the future perfect tense. Based on that, option D is eliminated. C is also eliminated. D says will reach. Will, will reach. Will reach is will plus V1 plural. And will plus v1 plural is simple future. We want future perfect. So option D is eliminated. C is anyway gone. Can reach, will reach, almost mean the same. Right. One is definite. Can is for possibility. Will means definitely. Right. Eliminate. Come to option A. Will be reaching. Will be reaching is will plus b plus v1 plus ing. Will plus B plus V1 plus ING is future continuous. V1 future perfect. Option A is also eliminated. Come to option B. Shall have reached. 
Now, will can be used for shall, shall can be used for will. There's no much difference, but there's a rule in that. We'll discuss in the when we go for tenses in detail. Right. Shall have reached is shall plus have plus b3. And shall plus have plus b3 is future perfect. We have only one ID in this sentence. That ID is in the future. And in this sentence, we have by. We need future perfect tense. Easily A, C, and D are eliminated. The answer must be option B. Come to next one. He was so afraid that his knees knocked one another. You know when to use between and when to use among. Between can be used only when there are two entities. Among can be used only when there are more than two entities. Now I have uh, distributed the sweets between two students. I have distributed the sweets among three students. Right. When do we use each other and when do we use one another? If I go for statements like the two friends met dash at the theater. The three friends met dash at the theater. The two friends met each other at the theater. The three friends met one another at the theater. Between and each other are for two. Among and one another are for more than two. Right. If I say, I have distributed the sweets dash Ram, Sam and Tom. My question is, between Ram, Sam and Tom or among Ram, Sam and Tom? That's my question. I say, I have distributed the sweets between Ram, Sam and Tom. Because if the names are mentioned, no matter how many entities are there, whether there are two or more than two, it's always between. So the names are mentioned, no matter how many entities are there, it's always between. So I have distributed the sweets between Ram, Sam and Tom. So between each other are for two, among and one other are for more than two. Right. What I said about names is an exception. Right. Now come to the sentence, understand the meaning of it. He was so afraid that, now it's always so that. So will be followed by that. Two will be followed by two. T002 will be followed by two. So will be followed by that. This topic comes in the topic conjunctions. Right. So cannot be followed by two. Two cannot be followed by that. It's always so that two two. That concept is completely fine here. So is followed by that. He was so afraid that his knees, knees means how many will be there? Only two will be there. His no, knees knocked one another. One another can be used only when there are more than two. Knees in a sense only two are there. So in this case, we, we require each other easily. Options A, C and D are eliminated. Answer must be B, each other. Getting it? Come to next one. Everything depends on your understanding of the sentence. And your knowledge of the rules in the language. Right. Come to the next question. When we saw him last, he ran to catch a bus. The sentence started this way. When we saw him, past tense. So up to the end, it must be in the past tense. Only then there will be tense consistency. Based on tense consistency, option A is eliminated. A says has run, present perfect tense, gone, no tense consistency. Right. Now the meaning of the statement. When we saw him, he ran to catch a bus. The meaning of the statement is, what was he doing when we saw him? That's the meaning. What was he doing when we saw him is the meaning of the statement. What was he doing is the meaning. What was he doing is was plus v1 plus ing. And was plus v1 plus ing is past continuous. If the question is in the past continuous tense, the answer must also be in the past continuous tense. That means the tense and the category of the question and the answer must remain the same. If the question is a simple present tense, the answer must also be in the simple present tense. Present perfect, the same. So here the meaning is, what was he doing when we saw him? What was he doing is past continuous. The answer must also be in the past continuous tense. Based on that, A is anyway gone. C is eliminated. Had run is had plus v3. Run is v1 and v3. Run, ran, run. Nothing like had plus v1, had plus v3. Past perfect, eliminated. Come to the given statement. He ran. He ran. The subject here is he. 
plus ran is v2 subject plus v2 symbol past eliminated now we have just on, only one option left option b was running now was running is was plus v1 plus ing and was plus v1 plus ing is past continuous according to the meaning the question is in the past continuous tense the answer must also be in the past continuous tense the answer is option a option b when we saw him he was running to catch a bus so what was he doing when we saw him when we saw him he was running to catch a bus the answer must be in bombay come on next one as soon as winter sets in the number of tourists start increasing suddenly this question is based on an exception that comes in the topic subject verb agreement which is also known as concord right so as well as some usages have some exceptions every topic has a set of exceptions we need to go for the rules and the exceptions by heart the usages the number of and a number of have a rule of their own right now the rule is this the number of is a usage taken as singular whereas a number of is a usage taken as plural we cannot think about the individual meaning of a here it is like a phrase right we cannot we cannot think about the individual meaning of a number of because it's like a phrase the number of is taken as singular a number of is taken as plural that means in a sentence if you come across the number of conclude that the subject of the sentence is singular whereas if you come across a number of conclude that the subject is plural so the number of tells us the subject is singular a number of tells us the subject is plural now come to the given statement the number of tourists as soon as winter sets in the number of tourists so in this statement we have the number of that means the subject is singular and if the subject is singular the verb must also be singular subject verb agreement based on that option a is eliminated a says r r is a plural verb eliminated option b is eliminated b says start start is also a plural verb eliminated option d is eliminated d also says the given statement no improvement the given statement also says start plural eliminated based on the simple rule regarding the exception of the usage the number of three options are gone we have only one option left that is option c so as soon as the winter sets in the number of tourists increases increases is a singular verb because of the s as we discussed earlier whenever there is s es or ies to a verb that means a verb is singular so as soon as winter sets in the number of tourists increases suddenly right increases suddenly increases is a verb suddenly is describing increases any word that describes a verb is called an adverb so suddenly becomes an adverb right this is how we need to tackle sentence improvement questions